Hello, and thank you for listening to A Glimpse of the Kingdom. I am David Pendergrass. I've done some podcasts and blogs on God and morality, but I want to say a little bit more right now. I've been <laughs> listening to people and debates online and I and questions, and I think this is a worthwhile thing to make sure as much as possible we're clear on this. In the Christian worldview, there are different ways of understanding morality and ethics, okay? But what most Christians certainly around the world historically have agreed upon is that God is the source of morality. And what that means is the reason why something is good and something is bad or something is good and something is evil is because it is grounded. That's a philosophical term. It is grounded in God's character. It's like saying, how do you know something is left and something is right? Well, it's grounded in the center. You got to pick center somewhere and then whatever's to the left of it's left of it. <laughs> That's the definition of defining something with a definition you're not supposed to do. But I would show you with my hands, but you can't see me. But <laughs> you have to have a plumb line, a ground zero, a grounding. And you say, okay, from that point, this direction is left. This direction is right. That deals with right and wrong. It's got to be grounded. You got to start somewhere. And then you say, now... If it comports with this, it's good or right. It comports with this, it's bad or evil. Christians historically have said it's God's very character that is good. A well-known dilemma called the Euthyphro Dilemma is found in Plato's dialogue called Euthyphro, in which Socrates asks Euthyphro, this is the question, roughly translated in English, because it was originally in Greek. It says, is the pious... Loved by the gods because it is pious, or is it pious because it is loved by the gods? So that's like saying, is something good because God wills it, or does God will it because it's good? Now, this is a dilemma because if you say it's because God wills it, it sounds arbitrary. Is it good because God wills it? Sounds arbitrary, like God could will rape and pillage and murder, and then it would be called good just because God willed it. That seems arbitrary. If it's the other dilemma, the other one that makes it a dilemma is, well, if, no, 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 it's God wills the good, well, then good is independent of God. One well, monotheistic religions, of which Christianity is a part, that's problematic because we think there is nothing outside that independently exists, well, most Christian philosophers do not think that. <laughs> and certainly the history of Christianity, God is the uh, ultimate good. He is the ultimate ground of reality, as many philosophers have said for centuries. So the problem, the dilemma seems to be either it's arbitrary, God just randomly picks stuff and says, oh, it's good because God did it. Or you say, no, it's already good and just God, he picks from a list of things that are already good. Well, then it's, well, where did that good come from? If God picks from a random list of shopping list of good things, good values, where did that come from? It's independent of God. There must be another God or whatever. So that seems to be a dilemma. Christians have handled this issue for a long time, but atheists and skeptics and so forth always bring this up as the slam dunk against Christian concept of morality. They say, wait, wait, wait. If you say good is grounded in God, then they bring up youth for a dilemma. Christians have actually have handled this for a long, long time. And I'm going to respond to what the Christian says. I'm going to give you the Christian response and then give you a rebuttal and then a Christian response to the rebuttal. Christians have historically said for a long time, no, 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 there is no dilemma. There is no dilemma. It's because something is good because it is grounded in God's very character. So one might say, quite frankly, it is the first option of the dilemma. So... The first question is, is it good because God wills it? The answer is yes. Yes. So where people like William Lane Craig and many other philosophers will say, there's a third option. The third option is it is grounded in God's very character. That's fine. I just disagree with them. I don't think there's a third option. I, I think if I were answering uh, in this Socrates Euthyphro discussion, I would say the option A is the answer. That is to say it is good because God wills it. The real question is not whether or not God wills the good. The question is, is it arbitrary? Is it arbitrary that it is good? So God could have chosen to, that murder is good and that rape is good and pillaging is good and genocide is good. The response to that is, 
No. It's not arbitrary. Now, arbitrary means something that's based on a random choice or just the, the vagaries, the personal whim of something, not based on a, a good reason or a system of thought or system of belief, just just eh, like a roll the dice kind of stuff, as if God's up there going, meeny, money, mo, rape is bad, justice is good. In the Christian worldview, Christian theism says, no, the reason why the answer is no, why it's not arbitrary, the reason why God would never, ever have chosen rape as a good thing is because... It is based on God's very moral character. And this is where I have to get a little even more philosophical with you. In Christian theism, which we've said for centuries, and it's certainly the majority view of Christian thinkers, is that God is the way he is, and that is it. That is to say, God's character does not change. God is the ultimate reality. He has what we call in philosophy, aseity. He necessarily exists a certain way. He necessarily exists, which means he necessarily exists a certain way. That means it is logically impossible for God to have, quote unquote, you might say, chosen other goods. As long as morality has existed, it's always existed in God's very nature and his very character. And as soon as, as far as we know, creatures were invented, <laughs> it instantaneously was bad to rape, evil to murder, good for, to be fair, good to tell the truth, uh, good to be you know, honest, good to be kind. Now, why is that? Because those flow directly out of the character of God himself. And God cannot be any other way. He cannot be any other way. So, so, and this is a common ploy sometimes. An atheist said, okay, let me ask you this, Christian. If it's good because God wills it, what if God, would you, if God commanded you to rape someone, would you do it? That is a nonsense question. That is just like saying, if God commanded you to draw a square circle, would you do it? It is a nonsense question. You can have the word God all you want. Nonsense is nonsense. If God told you to make up a formula where the answer is horse, would you do it? If God said to go be a married bachelor, would you do it? Well, these are stupid. You can't do such a thing. That's, that's the same kind of thing when someone says, if God told you to go rape someone, would you do it? It would not happen. It is illogical because such a value would never be considered good in God's character because you can't get God any other way. Just like two plus two will never equal horse. Just like there's no such thing as a square circle. Now, the reason why there's no such thing as a square circle is that's illogical. Well, where does that come from? Where does logic come from? That comes from the mind of God. God cannot be illogical. That would be a deficiency on his part he is perfectly good and that means he's also perfectly he's a perfect being and he's perfectly logical so he cannot be illogical so we can ask questions that are dumb but the answer is i can't answer the question because it's a dumb question or you just say no i i i can't answer the question because it's nonsense and god would never ask me to rape anybody well if he did would you do it it's a nonsense question well if God would have said that, would it be good to rape people? The answer is he would never, ever, 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 ever do that. He would not, he could not ever because it's not in his character. All the values of morality that we know to be true and that we apparently continue to discover over the centuries, those values are grounded in God. And since God necessarily, I'm just repeating myself here, and since God necessarily exists, and we don't get God in a way he is not. We only get God the way he is. His very character necessitates that the good is good. And it is always good. It is always a good thing, good value, to be honest, to be kind, be fair, those kinds of things. Now, those are moral values, moral values. So that's my first thing I'll say that. And a lot of people, well, I think get that very confused. So this is not a dilemma. 
So is it good because God wills it or does he will it because it's good? The answer is it's good. God wills the good. <laughs> he wills the good and he only wills the good and he only wills the good because he only wills what's in his character. His character is always good. So from a human perspective, it is good because he wills it. Well, why is that not just random and arbitrary? It's not arbitrary because it flows from God's very character and his character is always good. That's a value. That's one thing. What most people get confused are what a duty is, a duty, D-U-T-Y. A value is, in the, you might say, in the abstract, fairness, equality, honesty. Those are values. A duty is what I'm supposed to do in the moment. And again, you need to listen to other podcasts on this, but just very briefly, and I'll hit some of it, but I hope you'll listen to other podcasts on this issue because I get in a lot more detail. A value is abstract. The duty is what I'm supposed to do in the moment. That's very different. We can have competing values. And in ethics, we call these uh, different values or different, we might call them rules. We all these, call these the weight of rules, the weight of rules. So, for example, uh, we have different values or rules, you might say. It is good to preserve human life. It is good to tell the truth. It is good to be peaceful or whatever. Well, then the question is, okay, let's say for a second, I asked, used to ask my students this. If there was one other person and they were standing in the way of a hospital, of a medicine, you see a CVS or whatever your, whatever your medicine place store is, you know, it's post-apocalyptic kind of thing and your family needs that medicine, would you steal the medicine for your family? Now, right away, you're competing with two things. The value of telling the truth, not stealing you know, and so forth. The other is preserving human life, which is my family's life. So you have two different values going on, two different rules, you might say. They're both good, but we call them the weight of rules or weight of these values because some are heavier. <laughs> some are better goods in general. And so most people say, well, I, yeah, I would steal so that my family could live. Sure. And then the question is, would you hurt the person? If someone's protecting it, would you hurt the person? To get the medicine and a lot of people say yeah i would i'd try to i mean i wouldn't want to kill him some people yeah i'd kill him right away most people aren't that vicious they would say oh yeah i'd hurt him well see you're violating another rule but you're trying to preserve the greatest rule most people believe which is the preservation preservation of human life and i'd say well would you kill the person this of course is where most people get stuck because you have the same value or the same rule that's at stake the preservation of human life so to end one life is to save another but you're breaking for a lot of people, the, the top rule. And so what most people do is the question is my numbers. Well, if one person had to die so that a family of four survived, would you do it? Uh, and, and through the centuries, different religions and different philosophies give different answers to the question. Uh, for example, in Judaism, classically speaking, there are three rules that you don't break no matter what. No matter what, it doesn't matter. If billions of people died, it doesn't matter. You don't commit incest. You don't commit idolatry. And you do not murder. And that depends on your particular religious background. Okay, and the point is, the issue is, what's the right thing to do in that moment? That is the moral duty. And that is what Christians do disagree on at di different times, different contexts. And one of the reasons why is because in the Old and New Testament, different moral duties are called for in different moral contexts. But make no mistake about it. The moral values do not become bad even if you violate them. What I mean is, if I stole the medicine to help my family, stealing has not become a good thing. It's still a bad thing. <laughs> it's still good to respect property. It's still good to tell the truth. It doesn't turn bad to do those things. It just means I'm violating a good thing. It just means that I'm violating a good thing. I'm breaking a rule in order to helpfully preserve a higher rule. But that's the moral duty in the moment. When Christians say that moral values or rules are based in God's character, that's what we mean. It doesn't mean that the moral value is already always enacted the same all the time. Here's another example. In the Old Testament, what's typically called the Ten Commandments, and Jesus also reinstates this. It does not say do not kill. It says don't murder. It's one of the big ten. Do not murder. Do not murder. Well, 
It doesn't say don't kill. There are times in the Old Testament where God explicitly tells them to go kill people in warfare. But he never commands anybody to murder. Murder is always wrong. Murder is where you have hatred or spite in your heart. You, you, you're so angry with them. When God commands Israelites to kill people in the Old Testament, it's not because they do it because of hatred. In the Old Testament, they believed for sure that God was doing it as an act of judgment. They were God's judgment. Not big, oh, I'm, I finally have had enough of these Canaanites. I'm so angry with them. Let's go kill them. No, they believed that God commanded an act of judgment. So the, all these kinds of misunderstandings happen all the time. But I'm just my point here is it is based on God's moral character. That's where we get values of honesty, telling the truth, what's right, what's wrong. That come, The rightness comes from God's very character. Well, how do we pick up on it? We don't know. Christians debate this for centuries. They have debated it. My own view is that our soul, our soul, the living part of us, picks up on it like antenna pick up on radio signals. That's what I think. I think all human beings have radio signal antennae in their soul that allows them to pick up that moral law. Now, like C.S. Lewis said over and over, much more eloquently than I can, it's the one law that we can break. <laughs> we can break the moral law. Uh, we can try to fly and so forth, but we're not breaking gravity's laws. We're trying to we're trying to manipulate around it as it were. We don't break it. Well, the moral law is the one law we know we shouldn't. We should obey. We should obey, but we can break it. So I think all people can pick up on it, like our soul can pick up on it, but we can break it. And of course, as a Christian, I believe that the capacity to always choose the good is broken. The capacity to always choose the good is broken. It's as if there's a radio signal and we're like the old school dial and we're, that's my, is my radio sound effect. I'm top notch. I know this is Hollywood, Steven Spielberg, but it, yeah, there goes music. Well, if we can be in frequency and our soul picks up on morality, we just don't pick up on the frequency all the time because we're sinners. When the spirit comes in, the idea is that we can, in fact, pick up more often for what, what goes on. Anyway, all that to say, whatever we pick up, you don't have to believe that if you don't want. You don't have to believe that if you don't want. But the point being, we do pick up on it. We do pick up the moral law. And that moral law is grounded. True north, ground zero, is in God himself, his very character. Whether or not we behave that way is a very different issue. And since people don't, we have a word for that. That is evil. That's evil. Well... Just some quick thoughts on that. So, it's good. What is good comes from God. He wills it because it is good. It is good because it comes from his very character. It's not arbitrary because God can't be arbitrary. God necessarily exists the way he does. It is Therefore, it is impossible. It is illogical to ever ask the question, would God command you to do something differently and then be ran? That would be good. That's a nonsense question. It is impossible for that to happen like a square circle or a married bachelor. It's nonsense. And moral duties are different from moral values. Moral duties can change depending on the context. It doesn't make moral values go away. The reason why we struggle with morality and ethics when it comes to what we do in the moment, the duties, we struggle with it. It's because we do believe there are things that are genuinely good and we're trying to do the good thing. And when we choose that one thing over another good thing, it doesn't make the good thing number two that we didn't choose, therefore bad. It just means we chose the other good for the reasons we thought were best. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you'll listen more. If you want more, go to davidpendergrass.com. There are tabs at the top that let you have access to all the podcasts I've recorded, to sermons I've done, uh, books I've written. They're all there at davidpendergrass.com. You can also check me out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash glimpse of the kingdom, facebook.com forward slash glimpse of the kingdom. And also look at my Twitter feed at glimpse the kingdom or at Dr. D. Pendergrass, at Dr. D. Pendergrass. There's tons of ways reached out. I hope you will. Send me your questions. Send me your comments. If you'd like to support the ministries of Glimpse of the Kingdom, you can also find ways to give online on davidpendergrass.com. If you'd like for me to come and do some consulting, check out my website, davidpendergrassconsulting.com. 
and I'll be happy to come out and speak to your organization and help and train any way I can. God bless you. See you online.